Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Planet Zoo Arcadia. Uh, the eagle-eyed among us will have already spotted that we have new animals in a new enclosure. We have two Shawalski horses and another two deer in this enclosure here. We've also added two Shawalski horses, one of them taking a dump right when I'm trying to record stuff. Thanks man, really appreciate it. So there's two of them in there with our current European fallow deer. So we've got a few developments to make. This area here needs a little bit more hard shelter in it now that we've included a few new animals. And over here, we need to redevelop a whole habitat. Now, I've got a few ideas for this one, and we're going to jump straight into a speed build today, and we're going to do a little management portion towards the end of the episode. I'm also going to take the opportunity now to put in a load of greenery and stuff on this small island here, just before we get to the middle of Old Town. So we're going to leave the middle for now and develop this kind of outer area where these two habitats are, get that all finished off, and then we can start moving further into Old Town and putting in some more new habitats. I haven't forgotten about this little one either. That's going to happen at some point as well, but we're not going to be doing that today. That's going to come when we develop the central area. So today we're going to finish off this side of this barn and we're going to decorate this staff building here populate this with some foliage potentially another habitat here just thinking out loud here that may not happen though but main thing is going to be putting in a load of foliage and stuff and maybe adding some kind of wall system to the sides of this canal and see how that goes the bridges and stuff for the railway are going to be developed later on as well as the footbridges but i'm pretty happy with how things are at the moment and let's dive straight into our speed build and get this second habitat up and running so we're playing around with a little bit of terraforming to begin with i wanted to play around with levels in this one mainly because the original habitat we've built opposite this one it doesn't have a great deal of height differential in it in terms of the landscape and I also want to put a pond in because I believe that it's much easier to have a watering hole for the animals to play around in and swim in and drink out of as long as you pre purify it correctly. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of space to do that, so it may need to be a combination of a pond that is quite low down in the habitat itself, so we still get that terrain like height differential in it. But after playing around a little bit, I decided to leave this for now and come back to it. We then decided to do a combined viewing area slash sleeping hut that almost resembles a bus station now that I've finished it actually but I quite like this it offers a nice kind of two-way area and it looks really cool it did lead to me moving where I had my difference in height for the habitat because I wanted this viewing area to kind of back out onto that side there and we then took away the fence making it easier for us to finish building it and then just move it into place this stops weird angles happening with the building pieces. It just allows me to build on the level of the world axis and then adjust it to the axis of this weird fence that I've built in that has multiple different rotations and stuff on it. Put in some glass to protect people and animals from the wet weather when we finally get some coming in. It does rain from time to time here and we get a bit of snow as well. And then I thought this is too small so we're gonna move it up and extend it across once again, I forgot to change my axis there. It would be much easier if I just clicked that button that I did there and <laughs> move it across. Then this needs some supporting beams in it. And the more I look at it, the less sure I am about these white wood, these like really light colored wooden beams, but I'm gonna stick with them because they still look nice and it's a different color variation on what I usually use. So I'm quite happy with it. It's just not my usual go-to. I'm sure I'll get used to it eventually. Once all of these supporting beams were in, I did notice that there was a little bit of a lack of uniformity on either side and that's because I've put supporting beams in a different position on the customer facing side which means when we put in this final support beam, the angled one, it uh, doesn't quite sit right but it's still okay and it's not really a, a massive adjustment that I would consider making and there's just no really need, not really a need to do it. But this is starting to look pretty good so far. Obviously, it's not the internal habitat that is going to be the more important part of it. We need to make this look really pretty, but it gives guests a nice viewing area and combats the lack of hard shelter for animals. Now, I've not actually seen any of the animals use it so far to sleep under, probably because it's too close to where guests are going to be, but I have started seeing guests come into it. Annoyingly, I wanted to put a talk right here, but it doesn't seem to link to the habitat, and I'm not quite sure why that is. But we do have guests coming in and using it, and it's pretty nice to see. 
just making some adjustments there and then we're going to put in a wood floor here and then make a little trim out of some of the classical marble pieces and one thing i did experiment with here was adjusting the heights of some of these wooden beams that just made it look like a bit of a like ramshackle wooden walkway where the beams have kind of warped in the sun or due to the wet weather and things like that and it just uh, offers you a nice little bit of a variation so it doesn't look all like one flat texture here you can see us doing that now just adjusting the curvature on some of the uh, wood beams so that they have a little bit of an overlap and it's a tiny little adjustment like that that can really make a little walkway like this look like something a bit more than a flat texture i could have just left it as the cobblestone path but i quite like having it like this and I may actually change some of the cobble pathways we have going around here to bark chippings or something like that. Something that's a little bit more environmental and leave the cobbles to the actual centre of Old Town. I think that would be a nice little touch. What we could actually do is, as we're putting nat like natural path borders on here, using again some of the classical stonework bricks that we've put in the uh, staff building earlier on in uh, last week's episode, it would be quite nice to just have like a natural path here so when you leave old town you're just on this kind of dirt track and then you have this here which signifies a little bit more of a standing position for people moving into the habitat now and we're going to do a tiny little bit of terrain painting before we start using our terrain stamps and the general terrain modification tools to create our lower level and put back in that height difference that we want in this habitat and uh, i've got something really nice in the end it took a little bit of work and a little bit of tweaking i really like the idea of having this pond in here that has like a shallow end with a little walkway going down into it and then a slightly deeper end that is going to allow us to play around with some rock work and little bits of terrain modification to make sure that we've got a really nice looking habitat in the end just making sure that we are fulfilling all of the needs of our animals by using the terrain paint tools to make sure that we've got enough long grass for the Schwalski's horses they need quite a lot and then putting in our bedding again filling in the barn area and then a few little bits of bedding underneath the viewing area put in the two enrichment items we have unlocked we've since unlocked all of the enrichment items for the European fallow deer and we're working on the Schwalski horses right now I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in the management portion of the episode but back to our rock work which has become something that I absolutely love doing at first I always thought it was rather tedious but uh, after spending so much time doing it in like Northlands and some of the other franchise modes I've thoroughly started to enjoy it doing it in small batches and just really playing around with bits and pieces is really nice and you get some really lovely little textures and the way that the rocks fit together so nicely depending on how you rotate them I, I just think it's such a fun thing to work around with and, and play with and I think here has probably been the the best of my ability when it comes to rock work and even though I've only used a few bits and pieces here I think it, it just looks very seamless and uh, it creates a really nice border for this pond here moving on to foliage and stuff uh, I put all of this in and then realised that it doesn't sit with the Schawalski horse's uh, <laughs> biome. So we had to swap all of it out. But you can see what we're going for. These lovely little meadow flowers and some bushes with a couple of trees as these like hotspots, shall we say. Creating these little tableaus within the habitat to really make it stand out. But also making sure that there's enough open space for the animals to actually roam around in. And uh, yeah, so we had to start that again and just making sure that we've got everything set to European grasslands and that will allow us to put in only the foliage that both of these animals like. Really important to use those filters because it saves you undoing a lot of work that you may have put in. And I really do still like these plants that we've got coming in here. Um, the daisies, the poppies, nettles, and some of these really nice uh, cork oak trees and olive trees and things like that, as well as the hawthorn bushes. What I really like to do, because I think the hawthorn bushes have, have such a light colour, uh, it really kind of, it's a bit like dazzling. I really like to sink them into some other bushes. So we ended up using some, I think it's the um, common saltwort which I, I think might even be more of an aquatic plant, given that it's called saltwort. And then we sink in blackthorn or hawthorn bushes to um, just give that a little bit of a, a, a lighter colour growing through the dark saltwort bushes. 
Putting in some pin cushion flowers around this enrichment item, I really like to hide the spawners for the enrichment items as best as I can, and then some bushes just growing through these rocks into the pond. Tried with a salt water, it didn't really work, but I think in the end that I got something that I was pretty settled with. And then over here, a few more of these meadow flowering plants with the daisies, and then I wanted to put one more tree in right here, which kind of leans over into the actual pond itself surrounding that with some nettles and then putting in some long grass just to expand the terrain a little bit more and uh, yeah really happy with that and then the next thing to do was to just put in a couple of lying rocks that are just kind of sticking up through the grass a touch the cladding works really well for these because you get tiny little bits of them poking through the top when you sink them in and they just offer a nice little bit of a, a pop of color and a, a, a difference to that terrain as you are looking into the habitat and then we brought the grass all the way up to the rocks so that it was kind of poking right up to the edge of it and giving plenty of coverage for our animals. We're coming to the end of the habitat build at the moment and I kind of thought about putting in some falling leaves in here as well. I really like stuff like this because it really it finishes off the environment nicely and a little bit of mist. We don't necessarily need this in and I may end up taking it out. I just thought it would be really nice to kind of have something like that in there. Moving over to our building now, and we are putting in some windows, and I forgot this is where I have uh, overlapping textures, so we needed to manually adjust some of these windows to get them fitting in nicely. And I had thought about taking this entire middle structure out, but I decided against that in the end. I thought it would have been a bit too much work for very little impact, and I really like that that area is covered anyway. We could adjust the roof a little bit and kind of put almost like a turret structure on the top right in the middle but I'm not so sure it needs any adjustments and I think it would just be me overthinking things. The next thing to do was to get parity in the other side of this building so it was just about duplicating a lot of the wooden beams and moving them across just getting them all matched up nicely so that they resemble a pretty much like for like representation of the opposite side of the building. Of course we needed to do a few adjustments because there were some overlapping issues going on from the wooden beams but it didn't take too much work to put that into place and we eventually got everything nice and tidy happy days and then we needed to do the base of the building so that involved moving the uh, dry stone brickwork into this uh, inside part of the building again this isn't something that i'm going to look at a lot but i like to do it for me rather than um that <laughs> it, it would just make me feel a lot more kind of at peace with the fact that the building was finished obviously the uh upper part of the building hasn't actually been worked on a lot i don't think we need to do that because i think that would be a little bit of overkill but if i was to i'd put some storage boxes upstairs and maybe do like a little ladder going up to it that staff would access if they needed to go up there and grab something uh but if we did put like a, a turret type structure in the middle of it you wouldn't see any of this it would all be completely covered which is another reason I was thinking about doing it but I don't think I need to do it last thing was to just finish off adjusting this balcony and then we can move on with the rest of the build which is the outside of course before doing that I needed to put in a little bit of a fenced structure to really finish off this viewing area I've not seen many guests stop to stare at this part of the uh, the habitat yet but we'll just see what's what what goes on there Another thing I need to do is, uh, now that I've kind of had this open for a little bit and guests are coming in, I may need to adjust where my actual education boards are placed because the ones I've got in there don't seem to be getting looked at. I kind of just put them in random areas and hope that eventually guests will be drawn to them. But what I think is the better idea is to find out where the guest hotspots are and then put education boards there. We've put in a lot of... Um, audio descriptions as well because they seem to be really boosting the education rating of our guests which has fallen quite a bit it was pretty high when we had everything over at the entrance but now that there's queues building at the entrance to get to the the train over to old town the education rating is dropping and important thing about that education rating is it fluctuates so much as your guests are moving around so they could have a really high education rating at one point and then it would drop if they've spent a considerable amount of time in the zoo not being educated, I guess. I like these Chowalski horse um, decals, we've put them in. 
and we've duplicated them and put them in on the other side. It's just something to add a little bit more flair to the building rather than just having it as these flat textures. I could do my usual and run vines and stuff all the way up them, but I didn't think that would be the best idea. And of course, now that we have Shawalski's horses in both of these habitats, we need to make sure that our um, education boards are reflecting that by putting both sets of education boards around each habitat. So we did a little bit of a sweep around and obviously like I've already said we may need to move these at some point. I do want to keep these ones here though in this viewing area and also I may need to just just for my sake really put something a little bit more tangible on these education boards to make them look more attached to the fence rather than just having them kind of floating there. Then we put in an animal talk and this is where I had problems. This animal talk just kept saying that there was no habitat to throw food into and I'm wondering if it's because you can't have well, no, it can't be that. I thought at first it was because you can only have one education board, but then as soon as I moved it over to the opposite side, guests could throw food into that talk point. So we'll just have to see how that goes and uh, get that all set up. But it would be nice to have a talk point right there. I even tried removing the floor, but it didn't seem to work either. And I'm wondering if it's because there's something to do with the barrier there that's uh, blocking guests from being able to throw food in, or it's like just not registering it at all. And it's strange that it only happened in that one spot. Coming in with some more decals because I really like the idea that some of this plaster was worn away. Like again, we are talking about an old town here. It's uh, pretty necessary to have that sort of thing in. It's not something that's been maintained. And then we needed to light the place up. So I wanted to put in some hanging light bulbs. These are one of my favorite lights in the whole game. So we put them in just to light up these interior areas a little bit and then we put in some wall sconces from the, I think they're classical wall sconces, uh, we put them on the entrance to the barn and of course these are going to need to go all the way around. One thing I haven't actually done is put the solar lights on the entire like ring of the habitat itself like I did with the original habitat so we're going to need to do that. I'll probably do that off camera and you will see it when we do our management portion if it gets dark that is. Be interesting if it is dark there because I can actually light the place up as part of the management build. Next we're going to do some foliage and I wanted to do a little bit of basic pathing here that I'm going to continue around but I'm going to do this bit off camera but I'm going to show you what I'm doing here and then you can assume that I've done it for the entirety of this section of the zoo. We're just using these European bridge platform stone trims to create a path trim and this was a little bit difficult because of the angle of the path but I still really like using these. I think because of the different heights of the actual pieces I think they look really cool and they're really nice to use as like a path barrier so we're putting that in and then we're going to fill this central area with some nice green foliage and some like again meadow plants a little bit of rock work and things like that and then we're going to carry that on all the way around this part of the zoo we're going to do a nice forest of cypress trees that kind of blocks the train as it kind of goes around and then we're going to fill that again with greenery rock work terrain painting and i'm not going to show it because it's such a long process but you're getting an idea of what's going on here you're getting an idea of the kind of foliage that we're going to be using and when we come to the management and the tour you're going to see everything that's been completed I just think it's really nice to get these videos done and show you little snippets of what we're doing rather than a whole thing because this whole video would end up taking about an hour and uh, <laughs> I don't think anyone has the patience to listen to my ramblings for a whole hour. Uh, probably one of the reasons I haven't started streaming yet. Oh, and One thing I do need to mention though is that I did start thinking about making this a fountain but there wasn't enough space and there wasn't a lot of kind of terrain that I could play with so I thought just doing foliage would be the best option for me which is why we then started playing around with the terrain height and then putting in a couple of little trees. I really like willows so they've gone in and that's probably the the best tree I could have possibly added into that because it really finishes off this area and we just needed to rotate the angle a little bit so that it's growing away from the uh, actual house there and more into the center then putting down a few once again cladding rocks just to offer a little bit of a height map in here as well a bit of terrain painting and then we start working on our greenery so again we can put in some different plants here so we're going with European temperate and Again, that just allows us to put anything we want in, but we've got to keep having nods to this habitat that we've got in already. 
So we need to make sure that we're using bits of greenery that you would see in that habitat. It's just a continuity thing really for my sake. Uh, I really like doing that. And then obviously when we get into like an African area, we would only use African plants to decorate our um, like general guest areas and walkabouts and things like that and it just keeps that thing continuous all the way through so you have a definitive stamp on the place where you're going to. I wouldn't put like cacti in here because there's no cacti in habitats it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's got to be natural, it's got to look good and it's got to look uniform and like it should be. Here we are putting in our cypress trees and I'm just going to give you a little bit of a snippet. You can see there we've already put most of our path barriers in and then we're putting in this forest of cypress trees to really finish off the coverage of the greenery in this area. And what I should have done first was do a little bit of terraforming and put in some hills. At the end of the day though, it was fine. I did put some in, in and around the trees, but it, it wasn't something that I was too bothered about. I put in some smoke effects coming out of that chimney. I just thought that was something that caught my eye and it would be nice to see and I'll do it again on the other building when we develop that. I'm going to totally develop that building off camera, so again, you'll see it in the tour and the management section, and I'll explain a little bit about what I've done to that when we get round to that part of the video. And this was it, basically. More asters, a load of meadow flowers, and some bushes going in, and it was just a really nice thing to finish this all off. I had thought, like I said earlier on in the episode, about putting a habitat in here, but I thought it was too small, and... I don't really want to go all in at the moment. I want to make sure that the zoo's secure financially moving forward before I start making any big adjustments. One of the things that really killed Northlands for me was I got into a very difficult situation with the profit margins. I wasn't able to make enough money to make it viable to do things and I actually had to sell a lot of animals that I didn't want to sell to make it a financially viable thing me to keep doing videos and franchise mode it's very easy to get burned out when that sort of thing happens especially when you're playing on hard mode if your finances start to rapidly decline it gets very difficult and you the last thing you want to do on a franchise mode especially when you're doing a franchise mode for youtube is go bankrupt because that is effectively your series over um, so i do really want to make sure that i'm moving forward slowly and developing little bit by little bit and because Old Town has been a massive development to kind of move us forward and it is very much still in an experimental phase it might not work by the time we finish it it might be hemorrhaging cash here there and everywhere but I want to make sure that I'm doing the best I can to make this series the best it can be. We're just about finished off with these bramble bushes and finishing off this area. I'm going to switch and do a little bit of off-cam and I will see you guys for the management session when I talk a little bit more about how the zoo is developing. Okay, so it's time for some management and all I'm going to do today really is talk about how things have been going so far. We are in year 37, so a considerable amount of time has passed. We have a couple of issues cropping up already. We've got uh, some offspring from our Brazilian salmon pink tarantula and our giant desert hairy scorpion is hungry. We've had more offspring with our deer as well. So I'm just going to open up my zoo tab and give you a bit of an overview of everything that's going on so far. So currently, our profits don't look amazing, but there's a reason for that. <laughs> right, average guest happiness is about 57%, which is really good actually, um, for considering we've just kind of like moved on to a new kind of phase of the zoo development. That's pretty good. Our most appealing habitat species is our Shavalsky's horse, second to the... <laughs> is the Brazil, Brazil, second, <laughs> is the Brazilian salmon pink tarantula. Our reputation, just uh, under three stars. Our animal ratings, just over three stars. Conservation ratings maximum, which is really good. We've got lots of conservation boards, which is nice to see. Education rating and marketing, not great. Guest happiness ratings, not too bad. Here, this doesn't look great. This doesn't paint a good picture. Our cash flows are minus $6,000. Last year's profit, was not a profit and this year's profit has also not been a profit let's have a look at our latest inspection report cleanliness was really good education rating of one so in future what i may need to do is just develop where i've got my habitat uh, like education boards and stuff and sort all of that out moving on to our finances the important tab purchases i've just done quite a few construction costs when it comes to scenery uh, that's come from actually developing the forested area around the zoo so you can see there that's not that's not great but i've not sold any animals this year so far loans we don't have any ongoing expenses entrance ticket refunds we had quite a large amount of them recently 
Not as much as I'm used to, but still not something we want to keep around. Staff wages have come down a little bit after we removed a couple of staff members, but I've also made some new hires because I've adjusted my work zones a little bit and just trying to experiment with a few things to see what works. Power costs are always a big one. Um, I'm, I'd like to go all solar, but the, the amount of work it takes to kind of integrate solar panels and stuff into it and uh, the money that you'll end up spending on mechanics to keep them running makes things a little bit difficult and it kind of ends up wondering if transformers are the better way to go really. Facility running costs, ride running costs, scenery running costs. So our, our ride running costs of 1,972. Not great, but if you look at our income from ticket sales for ride tickets, five and a half thousand, really good. Zoo entrance tickets have gone up a little bit because we've had some demand to increase our prices, which I'm not going to say no to at any point. Our shop income is okay and uh, donations we're getting a little bit more in terms of that now for some reason i have this random donation here that is not like showing up what it is i really don't understand it anyway next up marketing we've not done any i did try some a couple of years ago and uh, it was a disaster it really drained my money over to our animals let's have a look at what's going on with our brazilian salmon pink tarantula where we've had a couple of yeah we've got some births there all males though so we're going to sell that lot and then down in number three yeah and number four we've got an extra female there that i can sell bringing in three thousand that actually puts our finances into a profit for the year if i remember rightly not quite it does bring our purchases right down though. So there we go, we've covered the purchases that we've made pretty much by just selling those salmon pink tarantulas. Next up, European fallow deer. We've had another birth in the habitat and we also have a couple in our trade center that I've named the habitat that they came from so that when I move them across to try and get a breeding program going, I'm gonna know who not to mix. And we don't have anyone that we have one here who's about to mature and he's in Habitat 2, which means he'd be able to breed with this female from Habitat 1 in the future. I'm going to try and save them for as long as possible and keep them all at the same age and then put them back in once we kind of have some of the current fallow deer getting to the end of their lifespan. And then I'll not have to kind of delve into the trade market as much. Giant Desert Hairy Scorpion. We've had a couple of um, newborns here. Uh, we're going to get rid of. I'm just going to take it all the way down to the one. And that brings in 5,000. What I would like to try and do in future is have multiple females to the one male in here. I think the hairy scorpions take a long time to get to maturity. So that's why I've been having a little bit of a, a patch where I've not had any new births from this habitat. But that's all done we got rid of some of them and that brings us back down to two breeding pairs in each one our giant forest scorpion has been pretty lucrative and always is but one there we've got a pregnant one there in number three so number two is where we need to start making some adjustments so we're going to sell all of them and leave one male and female pairing in there And then over to our Mexican red knee tarantula. They're really struggling to get this uh, breeding pool going well. We're not getting a lot in in terms of advancement in the uh, gene pool here. But we'll get rid of those ones, and that at least uh, gets us back to normal. I mean, we've got a third one in here, third female in here. I'll sell that one as well, and then. I'll feel a little bit more kind of safe in the knowledge that I only have two breeding pairs in each one of our exhibit hoods. And then over here, we have uh, one of our Chevalsky's horses contracted a disease, unfortunately. And this one who was born here is now ready to go to the trade center. So we'll box her up, ready for transport. Okay, then that leaves us with... Got another one here. Oh, they were in H1. 
must remember to do that at all times. And this one was in H2, actually, so that's really good. And we'll send them to our trade center as well. Okay, cool, right. So they weren't, they aren't amazing. I mean, look at, you can just see right here that they don't actually have any sort of, they haven't advanced, they're not gold or silver tier or anything like that, but we'll keep working on it and we'll see what we end up with. Next then, let's get back on our zoo tab. Let's look at our staff. So as you can see, all of our keepers are the highest rating possible. And our vet is pretty much up there as well. Educators, we've just hired another educator to run around Old Town giving kind of like pop-up guest talks. But this one is the one who's walking around everywhere doing the two talks that we have scheduled throughout the year. Our mechanics are split between Old Town A, Old Town C and the entrance. Now, Old Town has been split into four separate sections. Basically, the areas where there's higher traffic, that's where I'm sending my staff currently. Ideally, I'd like to have at least like one staff member for each area. But as we've not developed Old Town B, which is that bit there, and the uh, station area, we don't need keepers or vets in that area. However, the vet station is in that area, so that is included in these work zones too. Caretakers, of course, I need a few more of those to roam around and make sure that we don't have litters getting dropped everywhere and stuff like that. And the vendors are predominantly focused on Old Town Park B, which is the central district where all of the shops and everything are. Over on our vet research, we have fully researched all of our current exhibit animals, as well as the Chevalsky's horses, like two steps into the way, and our European fallow deer is fully researched. Most of the diseases are not done. Um, but we'll get there in the end anyway. Eventually I'll have to hire a second vet, but I'm really trying to hold off on that as much as possible. Mechanics we've trimmed. Uh, we've removed three staff members from this pool as we're kind of getting to the end of our research now. We've only got like themed blueprints now to get, and then that's that done. In terms of our facilities, you can see our scenery rating on a bunch of stuff here. It's not great where all of those ATMs are where the station is, but everywhere else is looking pretty good and making a slim profit. The toilet blocks I've just started charging for, which is pretty naughty of me, but we might as well try and get as much money as we possibly can out of this. The education rating is bad, basically. Um, <laughs> we we don't have a good education rating. The most educated species is the Mexican red knee tarantula, followed by the giant forest scorpion, the hairy scorpion, and the Brazilian salmon pink tarantula. The Chevalsky's horse and the European fallow deer aren't giving any education at the moment. And then all of our kind of other stuff, we've got a vandalized conservation board, which is not good. And then this animal talk here is actually at the entrance. We don't have anyone using that right now. Uh, because we've got no animals at the entrance but I will definitely be making something there in the future because a lot of the unhappiness and a lot of the refunds are actually coming from that education center at uh, the education center what am I talking about the entrance to the zoo that's where we're getting more unhappy customers transport as you can see here at the moment our steam train is making a loss this year uh, I'm not quite sure what's happened with that Oh, that was last year, but the profit is kind of stabilized again. And then if we just have a look at how much we're charging, $25 a ticket. We have lost one animal due to old age. Last year, we had Brienne, who was one of our first European fallow deer. She died of old age. And then this is just our kind of cameras and stuff. We've got a load of cameras here. Security cameras, all of the other stuff going on. We'll be getting burrow cams eventually when we get our badges put in. And we've got a bunch of vandalized stuff here that we need to kind of replace. That'll be another reason we're getting refund requests. All right. That's pretty much it for now. And uh, we're going to end with a tour of what we've done today, but just to kind of bring you up to speed on what we're planning next. I've done this area now pretty much. I'm happy with how it is. Lots of nice things going on here. Just sweeping over to show you what it's like before we go into the actual tour. Next episode, we're going to build a new habitat here. I've decided what's going to be in it. 
and then we're going to work on these buildings a little bit give them a little bit of a difference between each other and potentially remove some parts of structures and add new ones change some of the roof layouts a little bit just to make something a little bit more um, varied I guess we could even replace entire roofs I haven't quite decided yet I do like how it looks though so I may not make any of those changes at all we might just decorate them but obviously we need to make some little garden areas here on either corner and then make something a little bit nicer running through the middle as well as decorating the buildings themselves so last but not least it's time to have a quick look at our zoo so far and the two areas that we've completed i hope you enjoyed this video i'm going to be quiet now and let this play out and i will see you for the next episode of planet zoo thanks for watching bye bye